हरि ओम नमस्कार टू ऑल ऑफ यू आनंद तीर्थ कुलकर्णी कमेंट्स नमस्कार गुरुदेवा गुरुदेवा रिसेंटली आई बिकेम अटैच टू ए पर्सन टू ए लेवल दैट इफ शी डज नॉट रिस्पॉन्ड टू मी करेक्टली आई एम गेटिंग अपसेट आई हैव बीन ऑब्जर्विंग फ्रॉम फोर डेज आई डोंट नो व्हाई आई एम बिहेविंग लाइक दिस I was very calm and composed when I didn't care much about particularly someone. Don't know why the change is happening. I am observing but I am accepting but my mind is not accepting and prompting to show my anger towards her. Today morning I opened the Facebook saw this post and got a smile but still my stupidity behaving same. Love you Gurudeva. ये आनंद 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 टुडे इज बुद्ध पौर्णिमा आनंद वॉज वन ऑफ दी मोस्ट फेवरेट डिजाइपल ऑफ गौतम बुद्ध आई रिमेम्बर दैट आनंद वेन आई कॉल यू एज आनंद ऑफकोर्स माइंड इज very very troubles <laughs> on one side it's very beautiful on one side it's very troubles these are all called mind games why these mind games play from where suddenly that thought comes from where we have a presupposition from where we start looking at things in a particular way and not in some other way all these things mind if that person if she is not responding to you the way you expect you get why so you want her to respond only the way you think right or you think appropriate or you think or you feel it should be responded that way this is too much anata this is too much <laughs> everybody has got their own thinking they have got their own mind they have got their own heart why a particular person responds in a particular way is according to their own will and wish and whatever it is or even without that spontaneously sporadically what comes they express and you want her to be a slave this is dangerous you are trying to enslave her with your thoughts you want to enslave her you don't want her to enjoy that freedom freedom of expression freedom of thought of course freedom of expression comes with a set of responsibility you cannot make an irresponsible statement and claim that it is freedom of expression that's not fair okay she has the freedom to express what she wants to express why it should be the way you want it that's not fair when you try to enslave a person it is more possessiveness it's not love whoever it is love must be the basis of any sort of relationship or friendship all along you were having a don't by the right to do suddenly this is scripted with that person you are now probably looking at her with binoculars or telescope or microscope we don't know you are looking at her micro level macro level that's not fair every person has got a right to express what they want to express and you cannot enslave them you cannot get angry on them what you are trying to do now is to bring her under your control I, it is not possible and that is not fair also it's not fair play they have a right to express the way they want to express they have a right today after my posting 
this particular post, I have received seven, eight calls today. Everybody is saying, Guruji, is this post for me you have given? Seven, eight calls I have received. <laughs> Just like that I gave a post. Just like that, sometimes it comes to my digestion. I just, whatever I want to express, there is a medium called Facebook where I can express. Of course, responsibly. So, trying to cow down a person, trying to bring a person under control is not fair. Love is not slavery. This is attachment. In attachment, yes, slavery is possible. When you get attached to a person, then you want the person to do everything the way you expect. Practically, it looks like the per that person is lifeless. When a person is going to simply dance to your tunes, it is just a mechanical toy. You have seen toys. You can key. You can give key and it will start dancing. As long as the key exists. Once again, you can give key. Human beings are organic. They are not mechanical. They are not mechanical. They are organical. They have thoughts, feelings, emotions. From where it comes, nobody knows. Of course, I know it comes from forefathers. It is there deep in the blood. Inside the blood, it is there. Somewhere it is there. In the bone, it is there. And it comes out. Yes, it does happen. So, enslaving a person is not good. It's neither good for you nor good for that person. That person continuing to be there with you is very dangerous for that person. <laughs> Ananda, it is very, very dangerous for that person to continue to have relationship with you. Luckily, I do not know that person. Otherwise, I will advise. Don't go near Ananda. <laughs> take it light. Don't take it serious. I don't mean anything. I just want to be jovial with you. But at the same time, I want to convey. Convey. How it has to be approached. Love should be very pure. In any relationship. Any friendship. Love means it should be pure. And slavery is not love. Keeping something in mind and expecting the person to respond on the same footing is not fair. Of course, we come to know there are different thoughts when the person expresses. We come to know, yes, there is. Okay. Here, you are living in a denial mode. You know very well that what you are doing is not appropriate. I won't call it wrong. I will call it inappropriate. It is not appropriate. The way you are living, life is inappropriate. The way you are looking at that female is inappropriate. Probably you have to reorient yourself and invite that love with that person instead of being possessive of that person. When you are very possessive of a person, such things can happen. Such things can happen. In love, it never happens. Love gives, forgives. Love gives and forgives. Love is let go. If that let go factor is not there, then it is not love. Nowadays we find a lot of youngsters saying, I love you, you love It's not just a mechanical statement. They do not know the depth of love. The depth of love to what extent it is. They do not know. It is just lip sync. They say something. Sometimes people get attracted body-wise, physically. They get attracted because somebody is expressing certain things in a particular way. They get attracted to that person. That is not love. That is just fatal attraction. It is not love. In love, there is nothing like you see the person and you get attracted because the person is very beautiful or the person talks 
very wonderfully or the person is very brilliant, intelligent, all these things have got nothing to do with love. If you are going to claim that you are loving a person because she is beautiful, then it is not love. It is just some sort of an attraction, that's all. Physical attraction, maybe down the line another five years, ten years, that will dissipate, it is gone. Beauty will go off. Naturally, when you are young, people look very beautiful. Natural. But as you age, that age will give a sort of maturity and to see that beauty, one should be gifted. If you are gifted with that inner eyes, by the grace of Sudarshana, you will be able to look at things with more gracefully. You are not able to look at her gracefully. That is the problem. Keep, keep thinking about what I have said. Keep it in one corner of the mind. Someday it will be useful. What all I say may not be useful today, but at some point of time it will be useful. Put it in one corner of the mind. It will certainly be useful. And you will reform to be a better person as far as she is concerned. I don't know the way you react, what she is feeling about you. You would have hurt her. It would have hurt her very deeply. Hurt. The hurt will be to that extent. It will be so deep. You would have injured her inner feelings. Had you expressed it. Had you not expressed it. Your body language will show. Some people do not talk, but some people subtly will hurt. That will be through body language. The way they react. The way they act, that itself will hurt the other person. So I do not know in which category Ananda is falling into as far as that female is concerned. You have to look at, re-look at or revisit such things and carry on with life. Life is very huge. Life is very large. As I said in that post, you have all come for a cause. That cause is known only to the Bhagavan. Bhagavan, Bhairava, Narsama, only they know the Lord. The Lord knows the cause. Because ultimately He is the Lord. He is the Lord of multiverse, not universe. He is the Lord, the universal consciousness from which we all have emulated. We are all a speck. We start judging, we start passing comments. We start saying, this is what, this is what, this is what. We go into conclusion. And the data what we have got is already a corrupted data. And the information what we arrive at is also stupid. <laughs> Absolutely. So, please remember Ananda, life is huge. What may be attractive at one point of time in life, may lose attraction in the long run. Mind is like that. Love is from the heart. Mind cannot love. Mind can analyze. If you give proper data, mind can analyze and give you good information. It is possible. Mind is a very good mathematician. It can also manipulate. The other side of mind is it can manipulate. It can teach you how not to be also. And it can teach you how to be also. That is the wonder of mind. So, this mind, how to control this? Is there anything to control this mind? Is there anything like a control for the mind? Yesterday somebody was asking, when I was talking yesterday, day before yesterday morning, on Narasimha Jayanti at Narasimha Vadi. Temptation, how to overcome temptation. <laughs> I remember only Oscar Wilde. The best way to overcome temptation is to yield to it. <laughs> I 
you can purchase on Cadbury's temptation and eat it. Temptation keeps on lingering in mind, whether you like it, whether you do not like it. By suppressing something, it is not transcendence. If you suppress something, say temptation also, when you suppress, you have just suppressed it. You would not have transcended it. To transcend something, you have to live with it, whether you like it or not. In life, you may have to live with various temptations. A day comes, you will know how to drop it. Through suppression, it always remains. It remains, it remains, it remains. Of course, Gautam Buddha said, meditate. Meditate. Make the mind calm. Grow in your consciousness. With all your problems today, what meditation you can do? Of course, you all will be attending some classes. Yes, even for meditation, we need some music. When you put some music, the music will be giving some waves, some positive waves in that positive environment. Some people sit and meditate. Some people listen to some songs and they meditate. You need something. Without that, you cannot meditate. You need something to hold on to, without which meditation is not possible. Omkar. Some people will be reciting Omkaram or you will play it from a system, you will play Omkaram and you will be meditating on Omkar. Yeah, these are all positive things. You can do it. There is nothing wrong. Yes, for that half an hour, 45 minutes, one hour, you will yourself be Gautam Buddha. The meditation helps you. The word meditation comes from med, the root, which is medication. It's a sort of medication. Meditation gives you positive things into the mind and it makes the mind balanced. When there is a lot of imbalance in the mind, in order to bring down that to a state of balance, meditation definitely helps. Different ways are there. People do japam, people do... That is all to bring the mind into balance. Meditation like that it is a way to bring it into the... Yeah. Gautam Buddha was going in the forest. Ananda was with him. Buddha said, I am very thirsty, get me some water. Ananda said, where will I get... This is the forest. In the forest, where will you get water? And today is a very hot day. I don't think there is any rivulet or river nearby. Buddha smiled and said, Ananda, I think you didn't notice on the way when we were coming, some rain, I think there is some water on the road. It's a muddy road. There is some water on the road. Get water from there. Ananda went to the spot. He saw there was some water, but it was very muddy. It's not portable. It cannot be drunk. He came back and said, you can't drink that water. It's not okay. Buddha was talking with Ananda for about half an hour and then said, now go and see the same water. When Ananda went there, the mud had settled down and there was pure water. He brought the water in a coconut shell. He said, Master, no, water is there. Another, you said water is muddy. But now, you have brought pure water. From where did you get? You get you got from the same place or some other place? No, no, the very same place. What is it, Ananda? You said it is muddy. It is not drinkable. 
But now you come and say you are giving me very good water. How is it possible? No, Master, since we were talking for about half an hour, at that time the mud had settled and pure water. Buddha laughed and said, that is fine. <laughs> Allow the mud to settle. Then you can have clear water. You will have clear mind. Clear mind is possible if mud settles so. Like that, when mind is imbalanced, just, just keep quiet, don't take decisions. Don't talk to people with a confused mind. Any decision, postpone it. It's worth a postponement. Allow the mind to settle down and then you will know what to talk or what not to talk. Mind is all that. Mind needs time to settle down. But our life, you know, today life is so fast. You are all very ambitious. Once ambitious means you are so aggressive. Ambition leads to aggression, aggression leads to stress. Is it? He said, I am stressed. I said, reverse it. Desert. <laughs> reverse the stress process. Because we have keep certain things in mind and we want to achieve that. Like Ananda wants the person to talk to him a particular way, like that he has got a fixed goal, like that. We have fixed goals in life. They are very fixed. They are not flexible. Since goals are very fixed, we run behind it, only to know that it runs away from us. We get tensed. We get stressed. Because the goal is, I have to achieve this, I have to achieve this. In the office you will be working, you will be working, yes. You work, you work very sincerely. But your manager is not convinced. He says, I want more, I want more, I want more. You have worked to your satisfaction. You have put in a lot of efforts. But manager says he is not convinced. How can you convince him? You can work for your satisfaction. How will you work for somebody's satisfaction? How is it, is it possible? Today the entire world is trying to work for other satisfaction. At best you can work for your satisfaction. Very sincerely you should put in effort. You have to work for your satisfaction, totally be dedicated, be honest to the work and deliver it. Don't expect any result. Result will automatically come. That's what Krishna said. But today I don't know. If Krishna comes, he has to reverse back his statement. Because how much ever we work very sincerely, the manager is not convinced. Because the manager is a boss, he is not a leader. A leader knows to what extent things can be done. He knows how to overall present the performance of the team. He will not be behind the team members, but he will take them along with him. He will take that responsibility. When something goes wrong, he will say, I am responsible. When something beautifully has been done, he will say, I am not responsible, my team is responsible. Such a person is a leader. Leader will not keep thinking about his promotion. Leader will always keep thinking about the welfare of the employees. Such a person is a true leader. He is Swayam Vinayak. We Nayak, we say. He is the best leader. That is why he is called Vinayaka means what? He is the topmost leader, Nayak. Vinayaka, the best leader. So, when we start running 
in work to satisfy others, we won't be able to do. We will be stressed. There is no other way out. You can't come out of it. The thumb rule, you will be going on doing slogging, slogging, slogging. You will escalate as yes, complaint against the manager to the next manager, next manager. This manager itself has not looked at you. Who is going to look at you in the hierarchy, system of hierarchy? Of course, they will have all that very beautifully written. You can address grievance to X, Y, Z. Once you write, you become a laughing stock. You will be one in the hit target. So, Ananda, expecting others to behave the way you want itself is a flaw. It's a deliberate flaw. It shows that you are unconscious. You must be conscious. To become conscious, one must be aware of the surroundings. One must be totally aware of his relationship and how much of value he gives. If you value a relationship, you would not like to lose it. You would not like to lose a relationship if you really value it. When you value it, please remember, you will respect the relationship. Respecting the relationship means you will not expect the other person to react the way you want that person to react. You will give total freedom to the person and you will accept what the other person says and you will analyze and find the truth behind it. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Have a nice day. Joyous Buddha Purnima. Bye.